If I'm going to be honest, I really wasn't expecting to make this video, but this time, I mean it in a very good way. I hope that I'll be able to do this analysis justice because, quite frankly, there is a lot to unpack here. So what makes this video so critical to discuss at this time? Well, we, the players, finally get a very good look at what playing Life by You could actually be like. And I gotta say, I really love what I am seeing. So let's discuss it. <laughs> My name is Michael and welcome back to Sovereign Gaming. Firstly, I have to say that I am very impressed that this video is stirring a positive reaction that I see equivalent to the other strong reactions on other videos. Just from, just as a nerdy marketing fan, it shows that the messaging that the Paradox Life by You team is putting out is effective in that the response to their messages resonates on an emotional and impactful level. But I'll get a little more into the marketing sometime in the future on another video. Today what I want to do, like what I have done with some of the other Life by You videos, is analyze and discuss Rod Humble's playthrough video. Before I begin, I just want to say that I am rushing this video and doing the entire thing the night before uh, this video will publish tomorrow. So there will be likely things that I will miss. And I am trying to keep a sharp eye on what's being discussed on the community on Reddit to see if there are any small details that I want to bring up in this video. So with all that said, I'm not going to be able to catch absolutely every detail. And if there is something that you do notice, then feel free to point it out in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's begin. You know what, I promise you I wouldn't spend too much time in the Avatar creator, so let's uh... Let's get out. I just want to look at the house. So in terms of house, I uh, I either play beachside, which is um, here, um, or inland. And the cheaper stuff is is inland. And as I quite often, I will um, just give myself whatever money I want, which you'll you'll be able to do as well. Uh, but this case, we'll we'll stick with what we got, which is Woodview Cottage, which is cheap. Um, and we will. I'm also not going to have um, a job. Uh, I am going to go out and do some wandering. I could have a job, but we've just got all of these quests. And we've got a job editor as, well, editor as well, but I will show you that another time. So let's go into the game. I keep reminding myself I, I shouldn't play around as, of, as long as I usually do in the character creator. Um, and there you go, you get, get a chance to see the loading times as of uh, July, uh, July 13th, anyway. So, it's not too bad, it's a few seconds to go in. Which for an open world, uh, I'm pretty happy with, pretty happy with. Um, from the Avatar creator, that is. Okay, so... I think, let's, let's walk you through... The current intro quest, which, um, as you say, is open the package. This is where, in this house, the packages get delivered. Um, let's see what's in there. Okay, so we've got bluebell seeds. Okay, let's take that. And let's do some gardening. In this stuff and up on the right you'll see the social feed from uh, other thought I would never pause and talk huh well Rod Humble is very good at outlining that we have been shown the life by you human character creator and so I'm really glad that he decided to focus more of his time on showing the gameplay more than anything else working backwards I think that the aspect of social media playing a part in the lives of the Life by You humans is a very important aspect to highlight. So throughout the video, we can clearly see that the town publishes observations and events to their social media. So this can be both an intriguing and, if I'm going to be honest, an annoying aspect of playing Life by You as it felt like one could get overwhelmed by the notifications. However. I also think that this was already considered, and so it wouldn't surprise me if there were options to reduce the amount of social media notifications or what triggers a notification to pop up on screen. 
that's uh, put into the player's control on how they want to adjust those settings. Even the pop-ups themselves actually felt unobtrusive in my opinion, and so I think that it is rather the quantity that I am more concerned with as I play through in my own experience. So another thing that I'm really liking at this part is I'm really liking the quest aspect of it more than I originally thought. And to be honest, I don't remember if The Sims 4 had opportunities, but in The Sims 3 there were lots of opportunities that were presented as you played your Sims. I was never chasing opportunities per se in my own playthroughs of The Sims 3, but there were some really amazing opportunities or quests that popped up that I felt was really well written and well produced in the game. And so I am glad to see that function similarly here as well. Okay, let's do this one. Um, but I promised I wouldn't use the phone in this demo because the phone UX, a lot of the UX is being uh, tidied up or redone uh or improve but the phone ux in particular i was asked please don't show it so i will honor that uh, if i accidentally do just don't comment on it pretend, pretend you didn't see it i'll make i'll make my colleagues happy um and oh no 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 i want to get it here okay so plant there and i think for this one I don't know if rose bushes. I'll go on and we'll try it. I don't know if it works, but making, uh, but growing roses would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be a nice way to make a living. Little cottage by the river in a little tourist town. Oh, there's the delivery person. So this is her, her delivery van, um, and. That is uh, probably my um, my daily groceries. So the daily groceries uh, you can set up how you want them to be, and uh, they get delivered to your fridge every day, so, which is kind of cool. Let's water this. What's my neighbor up to? Maybe I should go and connect with the neighbor. All right, we'll do that. We'll do that. I don't I don't often do that to be honest. Um, I'm usually more crafting or, you know, exploring or, uh, or driving around. So let's, uh, let's go and meet our neighbors. We'll do that. Okay, so that's all watered. Uh, am I hungry yet? No, we'll, we'll cook later. Let's go and see if any of our neighbors are in. Nobody's home there. That's Perry Edward. Iona. Nobody's home there. Okay, so why don't we just go downtown? Uh, usually, so yeah, I can click on the map here, and that's where I currently am, and here's all the stuff. So I don't think we want to go over the bridge. The cocktails would be nice. Um, okay, let's go to... Uh, let's go and have a brunch at the Ivy Lounge. We won't have cocktails though, because we're driving. And I put it in the other day, or we put it in the other day. Um, but the... Uh, you, ca you can't drive if you've, uh, if you've had alcohol. Um, so you have to wait for it to wear off, so... I was quite pleased with that. I thought it was uh, I thought it was a real cool feature. Um, sorry, people. People on the side of the road there. When you see, um, you'll see a ton of like bugs like that. But it is cool. Check this out. Oh yeah. Um, but I also want to make this a gameplay one. Otherwise, I'd be moving all of these buildings around and stuff. I just want to show it as a, just a life sim, what you might, how you might play it for like the first, uh, first while. Okay, let's see, do I order from here? Okay, I think I do. So the booze is upstairs in the bar, I know that. Oh, you can order it down here as well. Okay, but I don't want that, so I'll have the pad tie. 
put that to the cart and let's have a non-alcoholic drink. Oh, they don't have any. Okay, I'm not going to have any drink then. Uh, I am just going to... Because I, I don't want to have to walk back across the bridge home. Uh, and I wonder if these chairs are set up uh, correctly. See, they, they need to be snapped. Uh, and then you'll sit at it. So let's see. Let's see. They, they may not, but... When I'm doing these weekly videos uh, for colleagues at work, this is what I do. I just test things out and we note it. So Many of you have already paid for this game, and so you can also see it. Oh, she's picking this place. Did she sit? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's nice. A, a nice pad tie. I wanted to pause it here because I want to point out that this is likely how restaurants will function in the early access version, in my opinion. Basically, you purchase a full meal already cooked and your life by you human then just sits down and eats it. For me, that is certainly acceptable gameplay for an early access version. However, I do question if restaurants will eventually be fully fleshed out with servers and a functioning kitchen, or if this restaurant shows an example of an establishment that isn't fully staffed. Just some food for thought there, but let's carry on. By the ocean side? That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. All right, welcome to town. All right, so let's, what else should I do? While we're here, we will. Well, after that, oh, here's the bus. So this is the tourist bus, which has just arrived. Sorry, it's parked, kind of weird. Um, and there are two uh, bus stops that we've got in currently. You can add uh, more, but one is by the hotel on the other side of the bridge. Um, and uh, the other one is here down by the beach and the tourists go back and forth and some of the tourists um, stay in the hotel um, which is kind of cool and you can again I don't want to talk about all the tools but you get access to them but yeah you can set that up um, the way you want as well. Well I'm gonna have to salvage a future bus video that I prepared weeks ago but that's a good problem for me to have. Anyways, I think that Rod Humble was very deliberate on explaining that this was a tourist bus and not a local bus. And so this helps to clarify things for me because I was assuming this whole time that the buses only referred to local routes. And for me, this also indicates two things that really requires further research or from the Paradox team to share with us. And of those things, the first one would be that there is some sort of a tourist system. And again, we are told that we can take control of anyone in town, and I have to wonder if this extends to tourists as well. Are they being populated off the map? And if we do take control of them, would they be, would these tourists be automatically assigned a home and a job, like suggested in previous articles? Or perhaps are tourists just not controllable, which I would find to be perfectly acceptable. And then another question that I had was that there seems to be control of where you can place your bus stops and to me this suggests that you can possibly control the placement of lines like bus lines and so this could indicate that local bus routes are possible or at least planned to be introduced in the franchise but that's just me speculating and asking some questions well um in terms of the number and where it all is and that sort of stuff so it's kind of cool why don't we and the little red hats, by the way, is because we haven't yet got in the, uh, the helmets. So I'm just telling you what it is. Okay, so there's... She's, she's shopping or she's working out. What is this? Okay, let's go, let's go talk to somebody. Let's go talk to somebody. And here she is. I love the way they just throw their bikes to one side. All the tourists, by the way, they get a little personal transportation right now. It's a, a bike or a skateboard. Um, let's go in. Okay, well, we'll let them. 
Yeah, she's not interested. Let's let's rescue her. Here we go. It's like, hey. Oh, he's off to rummage through the trash. I see. <laughs> I see the kind of guy he is. Uh. Oh. Okay, so we're now acquaintances. Okay, so here's on the, again, this screen is being redone, but I just want to show it to you. So now I've met uh, uh, Jane. So now she's added to my relationship so I can text her and stuff. Um, oh, this is what I saw earlier. We didn't know that, so I could shit, I could post that on social media. Um, so this is the autonomous uh, conversation, or I can go in and um, the conversation camera is zoomed in like this, or I can uh, keep it out uh, like this. Uh, so let's see, do I get the choices here? Yeah, we do. Um, let's befriend her. Ignore, ignore this. It'll be optional, but we're just playing around with it. And yeah, it's really cool. Uh, but we'll talk about that another time. Shh, pretend you didn't see it. Um, this one looks good. So this is going to increase, yeah, at, at a 6% chance of nothing. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to get something. Oh, he's reading a magazine behind her in the shop. That's cool. Um, yeah, man, let's be friends. I think she's... Yeah, let's do that. Come on. We can be... Let's grab coffee. I'm new to town. Well, maybe. Or maybe girlfriends, you know? I don't know. Okay, well, she gave the right answer. <laughs> there she go. Oh, I guess, I guess there's a little, uh, a little magic there. Let's try one more, and I am going to. I feel like taking off from work. Well, actually, I don't have any work, so there we go. I'm going to change this, and I'm going to say, uh, add new text. Um, I. Should start to make money, but I am enjoying chilling. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens there. Now remember the the replacement one was uh, okay. All right. To be honest, I can forgive the censorship here and there for certain UI menus and items. I totally get sometimes certain things are just not ready to be shown to the public. And in-game menus that need to be skinned is certainly acceptable from my perspective, only because this is an early access version of the game after all. I also wanted to pause here to note that the conversation system here seems very immersive and quite inviting for players. Surprisingly, I can see myself unintentionally getting sucked into conversations like this during my own gameplay. I never thought that I would actually enjoy the conversation system so much, but I gotta be honest here, I can honestly see myself getting into it a, a tiny bit here and there. But I just wanted to share that with you. I'll take that. Okay, let's... Let's see if she wants anything. I don't know if those quests are still working. We used to have... A, well, let's not... That's too low, get to know. Okay, so neither of those are unlocked, okay. So we used to have little uh, quests that they would do, go and get your stuff, so. We shall certainly add some of those. All right. All right, Jane, she was nice. Oh, when I got my quest done. Oh, that's only a temp thing, but. Ooh, quest added, shop at an online store. Hey, whoever did these quests? I think it may have been you. Hannah or maybe Lauren, but these are really good. Shop and all this. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back and shop at an online store. And this video is already 15 minutes long, so yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go and now I left my car here, so Right now, um, we have it so you do need to go back to your vehicle to get into your vehicle. Um, there's an option to have it teleport to you. 
uh, and we used to have it always teleporting to you but it was kind of cool to see um, cars parked and see people having to go back to them or like if they parked out front of the restaurant you know and they went for a walk so um, oh I didn't get my seashells you know what we'll, we'll do crafting another time we will do crafting another time I think that when it comes to quests that XP needs to be explained a little more as it pertains to each life by you human character. In my head, I immediately think of the aspiration award points in The Sims 3 and The Sims 2, but I would like to hear more on the purpose of the XP system in Life by You. Perhaps I have just missed it. Comment below and correct me if that's the case. More importantly, I want to talk about something very mundane but very important to me, and that is parking. Firstly, the option to have the vehicle teleport to your life by you human character is perfect because players will want that option to play with parking or not. I personally want to play with the vehicle parking dynamic because it demands realistic infrastructure to be represented in the town. For example, I would love to build lots that have parking stalls available for use since it would fulfill a real demand in the Life by You game. Just an interesting point of comparison, one of the most downloaded mods in City Skylines is the Parking Lots mods, and there are several, so I'm not going to actually name a specific one here. But what makes these mods so popular is that it actually forces players to address a mundane but very realistic problem space in city building. And I know that in City Skylines too, they have also added in a parking dynamic as well. Anyways, I love how they make vehicle spawning optional in this game since it caters to both styles of playing, meaning that players can choose to either play with parking or not as was explained by Rod Humble. But moving on from parking, I think that the crazy part in all of this is that there is a whole crafting system in life by you according to what Rod Humble is telling us. Sure, they these kind of crafting systems have existed in the past and prior Sims franchises, so I am very curious as to how in-depth the crafting system will go here in Life by You. More on that will follow according to Rod Humble in this video, and so I'm going to really leave it at that and just kind of touch upon it lightly as we continue to analyze the video. Okay, let's see if now she's going to go home. Huh? Is she going to do that? No. Oh, yeah, she is. There she is, okay. I was just impatient. That's cool. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. So, it's a bike riding on the edge of the uh, bridge. Sorry, it's a, that's that um, side bug. And that parking is a little uh, a little tricky there as well. But we'll fix that up for you. Okay, so oh, order something from an online store. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely do that. Um, did I did I cook anything yet? The f uh, because it's a cheap fridge. That's why it's loud. Um, I didn't. Let's, let's, let's complete this quest. Let's order some from an online store. So I'm going to place this here. Now, laptops work best right now without the chair. So I'm going to have her um, stand and reach down. Uh, but I'll show you the seated with the cooking because it does look cool. Um, so shop online, uh, this is cool, I'll show you another time. I will show you another time. All right, that's looking, look, look, looking weird, sorry. Um, okay, what would I order? Well, I could order from the garden, or, yeah, let's order something for the garden. Let's order something for the garden. Uh, oh, this is garden furniture. Okay. Yeah, I wanted seeds. But never mind. Let's do a... We'll, we'll definitely have a little, little something out there. Oh, there's seeds. Okay. We have seen water graphics look better before in the gardening videos, for example. 
So that could have been a separate save file with different app updates applied to the water. So I just wanted to point this out because I do notice the discrepancy in how the water looks in this video versus prior videos. Overall, I'm not worried about it, but I got something more important that I really want to point out as well. So firstly, I before I get into that, I just want to give a shout out to Reddit users My Little Cute and Cute Fluff Pup for pointing this out and helping me find the timestamp for this screen because it reveals some very interesting objects being the secure multiple mailbox lockbox and then there is a description for the London mailbox cylindrical at the top describing a mailbox that's suitable for outside of the entrance of a villa, apartment, company, school or home. My first question would be what the multiple mailbox lockbox object would be intended to be used for if not for a lot type that can support multiple units on a single lot. Since its descriptions doesn't really specifically correlate to the functions of any kind of a specific lot, then I won't make any concrete assumptions here, but it does give me a little hope for multi-unit lots. However, my next question really pertains to the London Mailbox Cylindrical's description, which states that it can be used for villas, apartments, companies, schools, or homes, and that question is, Will we be getting apartments and villas to play with in the Early Access game? If I were to speculate on this a little more, I do remember way back when The Sims 3 was first released that it actually showed rain, which led players to think that Seasons was built right into the base game. Well, we know that wasn't the case at the end of the day. And as I understand it, sometimes video game developers will build features that go beyond the base game that they are offering just to ensure that they don't accidentally block the feature from being hard coded out of the game. As much as I would love for villas, apartments and schools to be in the early access game, I am tempering my expectations here that this object may in fact be one of those developments created to future proof the life of the franchise. At the end of the day, I would be surprised if apartments, villas, and schools made it into the Early Access game come this September, and unless Rod Humble and the Paradox team explicitly communicates it, so I wouldn't expect them uh, in, until the base game, or even beyond that, for lot types like apartments. But that's just me tempering my expectations. Feel free to adjust your own expectations there. Oh, there's seeds. Okay, apple seeds. Perfect. Ten. One click buy. Let's have it. Okay. Now, let's have her cook. And I will have a stir fry. So these ingredients, because I don't have them, they're missing. I can just auto buy them. So let's do that. And then while she's cooking, uh, can I re? I love the little lamps. Oh, they're cute. Does this can this be watered again? Okay, so I would definitely go to water. That. I should have ordered fertilizer. Actually, thinking about it, um, or is that a skill locked thing? Let's see. A gardening four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I can't really do it. Why am I? Oh, because. Because I stink. All right, I'm going to take a shower and. Okay. Can she eat? Oh, yeah, she's going to do it autonomously. I love it. Nice job. Nice job. Let's see. She is. Oh, did I mess up? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, girl. You get to eat. You can eat. You can eat. There. E -e -e -e. Are our neighbors back? I'm curious who our neighbors are. So Iona's not home, but, ah. Okay, so he's cooking. I love that little love seat, that's cool. Okay, so now she's eating. Oh. 
is that snapped? Sorry. Can be tricky. All right. <laughs> it's good enough. <laughs> well, I'm just going to leave that be. Okay, so now she's definitely stinky. But look at that. Does the does the dishes. Okay, let's let's put in the dirty dishes. Let's get that done. When it comes to cooking, in my opinion, the UI menu placeholder skin as it is is kind of nice. Maybe I'm just not picky enough as a player, but I like simple UI menu skins. Or perhaps I just have no taste. Feel free to roast me in the comments, it's okay. I'm not taking that part too seriously. Anyways, when Rod Humble mentioned the crafting system earlier in this video, I also can't help but to wonder if that includes cooking and gardening as well. In The Sims 3 and Sims 2, there were very basic crafting systems and they didn't even call them crafting systems, so that kind of language has also kind of uh, made me question things as well. Anyways, they had very basic crafting systems when it came to cooking, gardening, and I guess a apothecary and magic as well. So I can't help but to be curious about what the depth is when it comes to crafting and life by you. Like will it go beyond creating or growing ingredients just to make something bigger? And I also wanted to point out that this was a point in the video where I really noticed that the timing of everything, like the way that time works, was very similar to that of The Sims 3 and The Sims 2. Like, I felt that the amount of time that passed for Christabella in this case to buy something off the internet and then have a meal would have been similar to that of The Sims 3 or The Sims 2. Again, feel free to comment if you agree or disagree with this observation of mine. I do understand that it is very subjective, so my experience in this case just might not be the same observational experience that you might have. Okay. And then I'm going to wash the dishes and then I'm going to take a shower. Then we're going to do the laundry. Then I'm going to water the plants. Then I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll stop the video. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Let's do... She can have a shower. And I don't know if I left on the sensor bar, so let's zoom out. Okay, we did. I did. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I didn't want to... Um, didn't want to get our own, our own video delisted. Off our own channel. There we go. I'll, I'll show her from the back just because we don't want there to be any uh, any misunderstanding with the algorithm. That is very cool. Very cool. By the way, I obviously I have the audio off. Um, we are adding uh, a whole bunch of ambience right now, which is really cool. Um, we've had it in before. Um, but we've redone the way the, uh, the back-end tech works. So you just get my, my voice, but let's start the laundry. Why is she sad? Oh, because she's had no fun. Okay, well, isn't this fun? Isn't doing washing and laundry fun? Actually, washing, watching the laundry go round is pretty fun. So I think she will enjoy that. Did I just see a delivery person come? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is that my my seat package? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, 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 great. Let's do that. So, I'll watch the laundry go around. Then I will go and open my home delivery. She watched it? Okay, let's assume she's watched it. Oh, now I need to use the bathroom as well. Wow, she is not happy. She's not having a good time. I'll get her some fun. Okay, there's my apple seeds. Wow, that is a lot of apple seeds I bought. Um, is there... Is there appreciate nature on this? No. Hmm. What could I... Do. do I have something in my inventory? Can I knit? Oh, bless your heart, Amanda. 
Amanda uh, programmed this knitting. Go on then, let's knit. Because that's got to be fun. Right. Everybody loves knitting. That's kind of cute. Like knitting by the riverside of your, of your cottage. Like, you know, first day in. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's really hot where I am, so my mouse hand is like super uh, sticky. So my apologies if I keep slipping like that. Um. I would have liked to have seen Rod Humpel maybe cheat some of these needs. I'm a big cheater myself when it comes to moods because I, I just simply am when I play life simulation games. It is what it is, and if you cheat the needs and moods of your uh, sims and all that, feel free to drop a comment. Just so that, just so that we have a bit of a community that cheats together, I suppose. Anyways, I would also like to learn more about the laundry system. Now listen, I don't need something as over detailed like the last Sims 4 laundry pack, but I would like to know the benefits and hindrances of doing your laundry and not doing your laundry. For example, would it affect your hygiene mood or is it just a bonus to your moods much like it was in the Sims 3? Those are some questions I would just like to have answered when it comes to the laundry system here. And throughout this video, I would have also liked to have seen Rod Humble take control of a delivery person that we kept seeing throughout the video, just so that we can investigate where they work. Perhaps this is better suited for another video or for a future video, but I would have loved to see the aspect of taking control of literally anyone at any given time showed off here. Again, I am completely cool with this kind of a feature being saved for a future video sometime down the road. And I also understand that they did kind of show off this vid uh, this feature in a previous video as well, but I would have liked to have seen it again here just so that we can get a more uh, in-depth look of what that delivery driver's life actually looks like and what their job actually uh, actually entails in this case. I also wanted to mention that the overall playability seems intuitive and graceful. The playability of it all is really where Life by You shines for me at least. I find the early access UI and UX seems very smooth to use from what I have seen so far in this video, and I like that it helps to simplify a seemingly overwhelming inventory system into something that appears more manageable. I mean, I was a little overwhelmed with managing inventories of my Sims 3 and Sims 2 days, so the UI and UX approach that was taken here, I think, helps to make all of these systems seem simplified and manageable. At this point, I really don't need to analyze the video any further for now since he just puts uh, Christabella to bed and all that. But before I close out, I just want to say that there are a lot of things in this video from Rod Humble that I wasn't able to touch on. For example, there was an auto shop listed from places that Christabella could order from. I have no idea what that was about. And with that said, when I get back from my work trip next week, I will definitely be open into looking into different observations made by the community and give my own feedback and analysis on that. So if you have anything from Rod Humble's video that you would like me to look at, then feel free to point it out in the comments section below. I do read and I try to respond to most of my comments, so you know that I am there and that's a place that you can find me. I think that the most important thing that Rod Humble's playthrough outlined was the gameplay depth of Life by You. In my opinion, the early access version has a very strong structure to support a gaming vision that goes well beyond what the life simulation community could really ever imagine if I dare say so myself. And this video came out at the perfect time as well. If I'm going to be quite frank, the discussions surrounding Life by You outside of my little corner on the internet seem to have leaned towards the negative side of things. And I think that the public really needed to be reminded that Life by You is a game that offers a depth that seems to surpass any other life simulation game available on the market today. This game has the bones to being legendary, perhaps even fracturing, segmenting, and disrupting the life simulation demographics and I will cover that aspect in a future video. And in my opinion, this video goes to demonstrate that gameplay depth that we really weren't expecting overall. Anyways, at this time, I want to turn the conversation back to yourselves. 
what is your overall reception of this video? Do you think that it helps to explain the direction that the early access version will offer? Was there anything that I missed that you would like me to add or take another look at? Or was there something in this video that you were hoping to see that you didn't? Again, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think. And until next time, I just want to thank you again for watching. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then feel free to subscribe and like this video for more. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.